I invite you to join with me in a moment of quiet prayer for Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger, Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who died in Rome earlier this morning. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you.
And let us pray. O oh God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the children of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman and born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption to sonship. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, 
Father. So you are no longer slave, but son, and of son, then also heir through God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, eight days or close to it have passed since we celebrated Christ's birth. Most of the world has already moved on. The Christmas decorations, they're down in Walmart. And Amazon is priming, mind the pun, for the next commercial holiday. But the church, the church in her nurturing love, she spends these days in contemplation and in celebration. She says to the world, this is the single greatest event that's ever happened. We're not letting it go that fast. The church in her liturgy will continue to celebrate Christmas until the Feast of the Epiphany, the wise men, and giving us a little more time to savor the moment. And your presence here on this, the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, it's vital Because together, we continue our vigil at the manger as we begin a new year. Indeed, New Year's would have very little meaning without the manger, without the Mother of God, without the Holy Family. Even our calendar changed to accommodate our Lord's birth. Before Christ, there wasn't a new year to celebrate as we know it. And so if we emerge from Mass this evening with hope replenished, our souls fed, and biblical counsel for the journey, it will have been time well spent. Our new year begins with St. Luke's account of the shepherd making their way to Bethlehem. And I have one question for you. How does St. Luke know about this story? I mean, he wasn't there. He wasn't even born yet. Neither were the apostles. They weren't apostles yet. The emperor gave no edicts, and there was no news outlets there to cover the event. So how did Luke know? 
It was Mary. Only Mary could have told Luke about this. Mary, mother of God. Her title and her vocation. And in telling Luke about the birth of her son, she chose her words carefully to make the meaning apparent. She is a Jew. Her husband is a Jew. Her son is a Jew. And as such, they follow the law of their people. And on the eighth day of their child's birth, they offer sacrifice. They give him a name and he is circumcised. Two doves for the sacrifice, a poor man's sacrifice. It's what they can afford. His name in the Hebrew, Joshua. In the Greek, Jesus, meaning God saves. Circumcision, the symbol in flesh of the sons of Israel. And of those three, the third, the symbol in flesh, is the most important. Why? Because by it, the sons of Israel also inherit the promise that one day, Messiah will come. And on this day, he has. St. Luke through Mary specifies that the shepherds came in haste to find her son. In haste. It's the same words used to describe Mary's trip to the hill country when she visited her cousin Elizabeth. In haste. The same words used to describe Zacchaeus shimmying down a tree to see Jesus. It seems that haste, hurried excitement, is the response that people have when they meet God, when they meet his messengers, the angels. The shepherds find the infant with his family exactly as told to them. You know, the church fathers had much to say about this scene. They said it's picture summary of the universal church that one day will be. The church that now is. They say it foreshadows the Eucharist, the town of Jesus' birth, Bethlehem. It means house of bread. And Jesus is the bread of life. They say Jesus sleeps in a manger, the place where food is set, and Jesus is our food for the journey. Arriving at the manger, the shepherds make known what is told them, because what the angelic host proclaimed was just too good to keep to themselves. They had to share it. The church calls this bonum diffusivum est, goodness overflowing. Goodness overflowing is the ingredient in every genuine encounter with God. And it makes sense. When you find something truly great, there's no holding us back. We want to we wanna share it. On a human level, we find a great song, a great deal at Costco, a great book, a great website. We can't wait to share it with family and friends. When we experience Jesus, it's the same. And greater, goodness overflowing means a desire to share him. And if we are not doing that, it probably means that our friendship with Christ needs some maintenance. When there's no urge within us, when there's no fire burning, it's a warning sign that our friendship with Christ is cooling. And like the shepherds, we need to make haste to find our Savior. One last point. Notice Nothing earthly changed for the shepherds. No material change, no economic change, no social change. All is as it was before. And yet, if someone had asked the shepherds, what did you receive on the first Christmas? They would have said, we received God and we received his mother, and now we know God is with us. 
I encourage you, pick up where the shepherds left off. Make this a year to move forward in your faith. How do you do that? Any number of ways. Father Mike Schmitz has a uh, Bible through the year that you can listen to his daily podcasts. And I understand now that he has catechism through the year as well. You can do it by finding a novena, praying it for your family, for your friends, for our bishop, for our priests, for our diocese, for yourself. You can do it by receiving the sacraments and sacramentals, opening channels of grace into your life this year. On this, the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God, keep vigil at the manger just a little while longer because soon enough the manger will meet the cross and we will know then that Christ died for us but today remember he also lived for us live for him I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And together we place all of our needs and all of our prayers before God, our Heavenly Father. For Pope Francis, who exhorts us today to journey together with all of humanity, valuing the lessons that history has to teach us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Benedict XVI, who has entered into eternal life, that God will embrace him in love and grant him refreshment, light, and peace in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop Christian and our diocesan family of faith, that we may learn from our Blessed Mother to humbly approach God in prayer with confidence in his goodness and gracious providence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace of mind and for peace in our hearts, in our homes and families, in places of work and study on this day of peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, especially families, we look for relief from the burdens and challenges to family life and human life during the past year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for any special needs you have brought here today, and for the people you carry in your heart and in your memory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, Benedict XVI, Pope Emeritus, William Vaughan, Rose McIntyre McCarthy, Carolyn Carlin, John Finney, Bernard Desmond Jr., Nancy Saulnier, and General Louis Cuppins. And for those we have lost during the past year 
and for those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. We bring all of our needs and our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them and to answer them through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And please be seated while our offertory is gathered. <laughs> And pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> o God, who in your kindness begin in all good things, and bring them to fulfillment. Grant to us, who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the solemnity of the motherhood of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, Join with theirs in humble praise as we are claimed. Holy, 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 Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven. 
heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <laughs> the mystery of faith. Bread and drink this cup. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Christian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, whom you have called from this world to yourself, Benedict XVI. Mrs. Edith Anabudoso, Mrs. Felicia Obedike, Pa Andrew Egbor, Mrs. Veronica Egbor, Ralph Beachy, Jamie Howlett, Hayden Williams, and Cohen Williams. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him and in him. O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord show you his countenance and give you his peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And go in peace and Happy New Year. So, now you can say it again. <laughs>